And congratulations on this documentary. I've had the chance to sit down and watch it today. And this is an amazing and very, very important documentary. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad it uh, touched you. So I was wondering if we could start off by, if you could tell us a little bit about the Barrowville murders for our listeners out there that, that might not have heard about what happened, and also tell us a little bit about where this journey started for you with this documentary. Sure. Um, in the early 90s, in the very small town of Barrowville, um, uh, three Aboriginal children uh, went missing within the space of six months. Um, uh, sadly, they were all uh, you know, found murdered uh, later on. Uh, the main suspect at the time was brought to trial, uh, but was uh, found innocent. Um, and uh, the families have believed that the fa- that the, the police uh, did a very uh, uh, lax investigation at the beginning uh, because they were Aboriginal, um, and that. The, the, the all the way through, they were not supported within the judicial system to get justice. So they've spent the past 30 years trying to uh, put someone behind bars for, for the murder of their children um, and also at the same time fighting uh, what they say is racism within the judicial system. So tell us a little bit about your journey with this story. Uh, when did you first hear about the murders and when did you decide that you needed to make a documentary to expose this truth? Uh, uh, My first uh, connection with Barrowville actually um, goes back to when I was uh, uh, when I was a child myself. Uh, My uncle had uh, married uh, into a Gambangi family um, which is the uh, who are the traditional owners of uh, around Barrowville, Nambucca, that kind of way, uh, the New South Wales North Coast. And I remember visiting there as a child and being told about uh, these three children who who had uh, been murdered. Um, and you know, I was terrified at the time, and I just you know tried to uh, you know that, I think that always stuck with me, um, just imagining kind of uh, how horrible that was. Um, and then as I got older. Uh, as a journalist, uh, uh, I had reported on and off uh, sometimes the family's uh, uh, sort of uh, protests for justice in Sydney. I had met them initially um, over the years. And uh, then it, it's interesting because uh, our producers, Stefan and Dan, were uh, filming with the families uh, in the past, well, around five years ago, as they were going through their last uh, uh, battles within the court to uh, have uh, have someone retried for the murders, and they and and, and so Dan um, and Stefan, the producers, approached me and said, oh, "You know, would you be interested in coming on board, potentially directing a film? Uh, we've just been filming with the families throughout the courts, and this is an important story that sort of everyone should know about." And so the first thing I did was I called up uh, Colleen Clinton and Evelyn families and asked them, is this something they wanted to do, uh, be a part of this uh, film, but not just be a part of it, but also collaborate. So I wanted them to determine what kind of direction the film went in. Uh, once they said they're all on board, I, I, I decided to come on board and direct. And then we went into production. So what was their first reaction when you contacted them? Because this would have been a, a, a very emotional journey for them as well, an emotional journey for you. So what were, were their first reactions when you first contacted them about the film? Yeah, look, we, we had many discussions, uh, very long chats as well, about, uh, you know, sort of the pros and cons of, I guess, putting their life out there like this. Because... Uh, uh, you know, they've, they've been in the media on and off for, you know, 30 years, um, and often they've been misrepresented, um, or often their voices are even excluded from, from, from the story. And so uh, my promise to them was that they would, this would be their platform to kind of tell their story. But at the same time, what comes with that is this would be an intense emotional journey for them because, you know, they're talking about in the film things that they've never spoken about publicly. 
Um, this includes, you know, mental health, uh, addiction, many things that, you know, uh, issues that come along with uh, kind of, uh, you know, with, with um, having your loved one murdered. Um, and then not only that, having to deal with it with a judicial system that has grain institutions has racism within it. And so, uh, you, you know, once we talked through that uh, and potentially, you know, and, and how we could support them as well, uh, because this would be very triggering for them, um, you know, we were able to work out a way to do this safely uh, where they were supported. And that's, I guess, the moment we decided to do it. And to Barraville to to start production, they they sat down with me and they were very generous. Um, and it was a it, yeah, even though it was harrowing, I think they felt ready to to finally tell their story. As a filmmaker, how do you handle those days? Those days, as you just said, uh, doing those interviews were harrowing. How do you, as a filmmaker, get through those days? And how do you support the family at that time as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I think f- first and foremost, my kind of uh, prerogative is whether or not the families are comfortable and whether they're taken care of. I, I think, uh, like, I've created my own ways in, in which I kind of, kind of try and deal with my own mental health and my own, um, you know, how I, you know, kind of how I would, you know, cope with hearing these things. But first and foremost, when I'm with the families, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm there to support them. So, you know, that, that includes doing interviews, uh, having breaks, uh, you know, ensuring that there are counsellors around um, as well or if they wanted that support. And so there were many kind of mechanisms in place to ensure that, yes, like this was, you know, that, that when we were filming that it was, uh, that it was uh, safe for them to uh, open up. But yeah. in terms of my own, uh, yeah, kind of issues, I think, um, you know, have, having been a journalist for, for many, 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 many years, I've <clears throat> been able to work out a way I can self-care, you know, and but uh, I think it's important when I'm sitting in front of someone who's, whose child is murdered that, they, that, you know, my emotions at that point, they, it, it doesn't really, you know, matter. You know, it's uh, because I'm there to support them. And then uh, later on, I can I have my own self-care routines. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that really hit me with this documentary was some of the things that you uncovered. It, it, prior to me being a, a film and music journalist, I worked at a local newspaper and was the crime beat reporter. Um, and I found myself, I became desensitized to stuff. But... There were things in this documentary that shocked me, um, such as the families being investigated at the time rather than the homicide squad being called in. Was there anything that you found while you were doing this documentary that that really, really shocked you? Look, I I can't say many of those things shocked me because I'm Aboriginal myself. Uh, I'm a Murray man. I'm from Burke in far western New South Wales. Um, I grew up. Uh, you know, with a with a real distrust of the justice system. I've had deaths in custody in my family. We've had, uh, you know, unsolved murders uh, as well and, and, and issues with the police and, and the judicial system. So I think, you know, I knew the, that, it, some, that that racism was there and it was important for me to ensure that, uh, you know, non-Indigenous people were able to actually see it for themselves and, and, and hopefully you know, have a discussion around this and why systems are like this. Um, I think, uh, you know, and I think that's the, the sad thing. I think, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's I'm, uh, you know, it doesn't shock me as much as, say, it would a non-Indigenous person. So the key was how do we allow um, people who aren't Aboriginal to see that it's not just sort of a bunch of black with a chip on their shoulder saying, you know, that the system is, is stacked against them. How do we actually show Australians that, you know, our systems are built on this institutionalised rate? So it's not a stretch to say that these families have been treated uh, terribly by the system, as you say there, um, as they were, uh, you know, uh, trying to find their, their loved ones who, who were missing. Um, 
the police were actually not investigating, you know, the, the, the murders. They were actually investigating the families. Um, and so, I mean, that's just absolutely outrageous. And it's, you know, and all of these things meant that, unfortunately, uh, you know, justice was never really served. Yeah. And then as we see the story develop uh, with the documentary as well, we are introduced to um, Gary, a detective who really wants this case solved. What was he like to to sit down and talk to as well? Because he has an amazing side with this documentary as well. Yeah, Gary Jubilin, uh, who's detective, detective, and probably one of Australia's most famous, I, I would say, former homicide detectives, came on board to reinvestigate the murders some, uh, you know, roughly almost a decade after uh, they had happened. And he was just absolutely appalled at, at how the, the initial investigation was handled. And so he's made it, made it his life to to uh to try and and and, you know help these families and uh, you know gary's a really interesting person he has a real you know he he's he's so dogged he also spoke publicly which is very rare for a serving police officer uh about the issues within the and uh, and particularly around racism which you know has never really happened in, in australia so, um, you know, as you watch, as people watch the film, they'll see that sort of he gets, he's, he's absolutely like personally connected to the families in, in many way. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, so while the families are trying to fight for this justice, you've also got uh, a homicide detective like Gary, who is also trying to fight <laughs> himself within his own sort of police force to and you know, help these families. It, it's an interesting uh, story. Yeah, but he is a any of the family members. He's a he's kind of a personal hero. Definitely. And Alan, I know that we are very quickly coming to an end for the interview, but I just wanted to know how do you feel now that this documentary is about to go out there to a wide audience? But also, what would you like people to take away from this documentary as well after they've watched it? It's important that that people uh, are able to walk away from this film and 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 not forget about it uh, because the Barrowville murders are, you know, there might be, you know, it's about Colleen Clinton and Evelyn and their families fight for justice, but also it's the same story right across this country in every Aboriginal community, and I I I would hope that this creates discussion and debate and actually helps uh, us hold uh, our 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 bodies of power to to account um, and to try and change the system. And I think, you know, the, the fact is we are incredibly overwhelmed by the, the public support who, you know, we would not have this film if people didn't donate money. Um, and, you know, I say people donated money to see truth telling on the screen and that's what this is. And so I hope that, you know, this brings some of our, uh, you know, uh, issues to light, um, and and you know, and and that go away, and you know, you know, look more closely at some of the issues within a you know the judicial system, within the government, and 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 that institutionalized racism, and, and stand up. To, um, and I I also sincerely hope that you know the families are able to be heard uh, clearly for the first time. Definitely. Well, Alan, I want to say thank you so much for coming on our show today. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, but I also want to say thank you so much for creating such an important documentary as well. Thank you so much. Not a problem. I'll let you go, mate. You have a great...